I wanted to share with you this phenomenal book a great friend of mine, Laurel Langmeyer, is putting out called Make Your Kids Millionaires, a step-by-step guide, financial literacy for parents, teaching their kids how to understand money. One of the biggest challenges or problems that millionaires face is that when passing along generational wealth, their kids don't understand money. And that's exactly why this book was put together step-by-step from zero all the way until 18 years of age so that you can teach your kids and multiple different ways of actually ensuring that your kids are millionaires uh, within their lifetime. It's a very simple step-by-step guide. And if you're not a millionaire yourself, no problem. Implement these steps in your own life and you can put yourself into the position to become a millionaire. And as a special bonus, because she's my friend and she loves the investor mindset, she put together a very big package with a bunch of training, eight hours of training, and one of her past books. Of course, Laura Langmeyer is a five times New Year's best-selling author. Uh, she's the millionaire maker. And you can grab a copy of this book at makeyourkidsmillionaires.com slash Stephen makeyourkidsmillionaires.com slash Steven. We'll include that in the show notes. Let's get back to this episode. This is the Investor Mindset Podcast. You really came from this perspective of, yes, I'm going to say yes to things. I'm going to look around and see, hey, what is someone else doing? And what are they making? What are they earning? What's the result that they're getting? And I'm going to say yes to that. And I'm going to find a way to do it. I'm not going to let beliefs or excuses get in the way. I'm just going to go take action and make that happen. And then fast forward, you got some mentors, you made some investments, you did some things that were scary uh, for you, but you had a reason you had to do it. You had a kid on the way and you became a millionaire. Yeah, and I think there's a lot in that. I I live my life through the lens of yes, and I do a lot of mindset teaching about that. A lot of people, just because of the way they grew up, inherited behaviors, they live their life through the lens of no. They'll say no, they go into analysis paralysis, and then nothing gets done. So yeah, I've done some risky stuff. I mean, most people look at my life and you know, I mean, I didn't know how I became a good skier, honestly, Stephen, is I would follow, you know, I, I would follow the patrol down, you know, through shoots in Taos, New Mexico. They're like, I said, let me just follow you today. And they said, you can't keep up. I, I'm like, yeah, watch me. Right. And so I've lived a lot of that, but never without a mentor. I think that's got to be the umbrella above my yes. I always have people who are just have a bigger game than I play. Right. There's always like I have billionaires I work with, you know, right now. I have world leading economists in this chaotic economy. I have three I reach out to regularly because I need to validate my work. I'm leading in no, thousands of people through this, you know, millionaire maker journey. You know, I can't get it wrong. So I can say all those yeses come with an amazing team and mentors. And I think that's where a lot of people get scared is they don't have a mentor. They don't have somebody that can pick up the phone and say, hey, Stephen, what do you think about that? I mean, am I thinking about this right? Should I be doing that? What else should I be thinking about? I mean, those are regular conversations. And I think people don't, I don't think so. I, they don't have those conversations. They just sit in their fear and their analysis and go, oh my God, the world's scary. I mean, it is scary out there right now. Shit, mm-hmm. It's never been so scary. Not in my lifetime. It's scary, but it also means that there's a lot of opportunity if you know how to look for it. And the only reason I have that belief is because I happen to surround myself with some great mentors who are able to redirect my thinking and remind me that when people are scared, that is actually where there's some of the biggest opportunities in, in business available. Well, it is. And, you know, I call this the most indiscriminate crash in the history of our world. And it is a world problem, right? Mm -hmm. Never has the world shut down. March 2020, the world all at one time shut down. Like that has never happened. So, Mm -hmm. but in all of that and all that, you know, living the life through what's scary and I might get sick and I might, and I might, and I might, and almost, and all that kind of, you know, non-committal behavior and thinking, the rest of us are jamming. I mean, mm-hmm. that volatile, scary market, it creates huge volatility, which creates huge opportunity. And it's coming again this year. I mean, the housing market is going to have such a rock and roll, like roller coaster, but you've got to know what's going on. You just can't casually sit on the internet. And I think too many people are doing that, Stephen. They think that, that if I can listen to Stephen's podcast for free or Laurel's podcast for free and other people, I'll get enough information, I'll figure it out. Why would you even risk putting that together? 
To me, that's like picking up pieces of a Rubik's cube and trying to put it together because all of us have a little different slant. You got to have some glue. To me, the mentor is your mm -hmm. glue. And, and I do think that people should be out looking around on the internet and learning. But at the end of the day, man, the opportunities of becoming a shark, right? Everybody says, I want to be a shark like you. Oh my gosh, you have this huge portfolio of all these different <laughs> assets. Yeah, but I have a lot of mentors in those classes. I mean, I'm a millionaire in now eight industries. And this year, I'll hit another one, I'll hit a ninth industry uh, as a millionaire. And so it's not difficult to do, but you got to have mentors. You got to have a plan and you got to keep this straight. <laughs> you got to keep oh, this straight. It, you absolutely have to keep it straight. But a lot of people, they're listening to the show. They're listening to your show. They're going out there. They're gathering all this free information. I agree. It's a great place to start. It's a great place to build a relationship to then make an investment in a mentor. What other ways should people go about understanding who they should be listening to when it comes to making decisions in turbulent times? So I do a lot of due diligence. I teach my clients to do a lot of due diligence. It starts with obviously consuming their information and seeing if you have philosophical alignment. Like I was kind of grew up in this industry through the rich dad, poor dad brand. So I do have that to say, well, I'm the extension of that same philosophy. So there mm -hmm. are different tracks of philosophy. You got to pick a path. Like there are mm -hmm. people who are still reading like Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman. I said, you can't, that is not a, like, you can't be in that lane and come to my lane. Like I'm making millionaires and they're making you, uh, you know, cut up your credit cards and live in safe little boxes and not take mm -hmm. advantage of the tax code and the corporate code. And like you, that would be saying I want to be fat and skinny. So mm -hmm. I think first pick your lane and your philosophy. Like if you're really not up for being a millionaire and making a lot of money and doing alternative investments, because that's really what I do. I'm real estate's one of many categories. And you just want to stay in the little stock market and pray to God this whole mutual fund thing is going to work out for you, then good. But but you're not my people. <laughs> you are not my mm -hmm. people. You are my people if you want alternatives and raising capital and understanding how this works. So I think pick a lane first. And then I dive deep into that lane. And who, who has those philosophies? Who understands? Who's, who has similar thinking and, and, and work? And then I go deep. I go, if I'm going to do it, like really work with somebody, I background checks, full due diligence checks, reference checks, and not references of friends that just because they have wine together every Friday. Mm -hmm. I mean, deep, have you done business? Have you owned an LLC with someone? Um, I mean, the obvious question of a, of a CPA. Do you do individual returns or corporate returns? If you don't do corporate mm -hmm. returns, I will not be your guinea pig, nor do I. So I have a whole interview process that I think is critical. And then show me the proof. Because right now, and you know it, Stephen, like I know it, I had a private plane for 14 years of my career. I took my kids all over the world in that thing as a mm -hmm. single mom. Just a lot of choices. My minivan in the sky, I called it. <laughs> um, but I owned it. And I had people say, well, are, are you leasing it? Are you standing in front of it? And I said, no, here's the, like, I own it. I own the, the, like, I'm not, I'm not a net jets. I bought the plane for 3 million bucks. I put it in my own anger and I say, prove it. Cause there's a lot of leasing going on. There's a lot of showcasing going on with, especially on the internet right now where people are standing mm -hmm. behind huge mansions. They're not theirs. They're rented. They're standing in front of leased planes. That's fine. If you're going to lease a plane, I still lease planes too. I got rid of mine, but be real and, and, and find out, ask the questions. Don't be mesmerized. Like don't, you know, be in this, Oh my gosh, kind of a world. I mean, get real with people. And then here's the big one that I do is I give my clients my cell phone. If you can't text who you're paying a lot of money to, you got, I, th I think you got a problem because you're, yeah. you're paying me. Yeah, you're paying your, my system. You're going to talk to not just me, but boy, if you can't talk to me and you're in that 20, 30, 40, $50,000 tuition range, I'd say I'm out. I, yeah. you know, this thing and a Rolodex from heaven. I got Bob Proctor in here. I got all sorts of people in Washington that used to be there. I, I mean, I got a world leading economist in here. I, this thing's gold. And you know what people pay me for? Access to this. And Your relationships. I, I, and a real relationship. What a real relationship with me. Like I, I did this. This is grit, right? I didn't, you know, I didn't get propped up and supported and sponsored by, you know, big financial firms. And so I, I think those are some, but I think you gotta, you gotta know what you want. But I think the first one that not enough people talk about is pick a lane. Like, I don't know how people who, had, who, who wanted a result, right? But then when we really got into their behavior, they really wanted to do it Susie Orman way. And Susie's mm -hmm. lovely. But you know this work, Stephen. I mean, you don't put 
you know, you, me, Tony Robbins can all go on the same track. You wouldn't say, oh, and then also go to Susie and Dave Ramsey's seminar. Like it, it would it's just a very so different way of thinking. You can't go down that path and think about, let me save every single dollar that I make and not invest in anything that's going to create cash flow mm -hmm. and be extremely conservative in these little buckets. It's a very different way of thinking. And so it's going to, it, they'll just directly conflict with one another. So I think that it, it's such an important thing to remember that you've got to choose what direction. And, and one of the five success principles we talk about of the investor mindset is that you need to be super focused, right? You guys can yeah. grab the investor mindset, five success principles at investormindset.com slash success. But one of them is focus because you need to be an expert in one of your areas. You can't focus on everything. Now, very successful people like you, you've built multiple income streams. You've, you've been a millionaire in multiple different sectors. But the reason you're able to be a millionaire in multiple sectors is because you're a millionaire in one sector first. Correct. And it was real estate. And it, I can tell everyone watching, it is one of the, I'm going to say, I should not say easiest way, but I have made more millionaires in real estate. If I look across the millionaires that I make, I've made more in real estate just because I know it like the back, I've, I, I've done it now for 20 something years and been living in that space. And a lot of people can do that. It's more difficult to do it in a very specialized space. Like one of the specialized spaces I took a run at in 2004 and five was, was a supplement industry. Mm. And it was a very direct mail, um, heavy lifting, lots of moving parts. Lovely. We had a big exit, $24 million exit. And I hung up those tennis shoes and I said, mm -hmm. I don't think I'll do that one again. Thank you for listening to the Investor Mindset Podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share with a friend. Head over to theinvestormindset.com to join the Insider Club, where we share tools and strategies from the top investors and entrepreneurs on how to take it to the next level.